Black Widow. She mates and she kills. So why is 1987's Black Widow mentioned in the same conversations involving such modern film noirs as Night Moves, Body Heat, um, The Last Seduction? Well, the main reason is because it's not as good as any of those films. And maybe the fact that it arrived six months after uh, Fatal Attraction came and stole all the limelight. That's not to say it's not a good film, however, but I did find it a very frustrating one. A film that could have been as good as some of those I've just mentioned if it just had a little bit more care and polish. Let's check it out. So 1987's Black Widow is a film noir psychological drama about a female gold digging serial killer who preys on rich older men. And when these men start dying in their sleep under mysterious circumstances, uh, by the book, Federal Investigator Alex, played by Deborah Winger, suspects that the common link may be Catherine, played by Teresa Russell, a sultry chameleon who adopts different names and personas to land each husband. And so we begin with uh, super suspicious Alex, noticing the similarities between the deaths of two wealthy men. She's convinced they're connected, but everyone else thinks she's reading too much into it. Spoiler alert, she isn't, because both men died at the scheming hands of Catherine Peterson, the aforementioned uh, super sultry Teresa Russell, a lady who seduces and marries these men who have a fortune, and once they alter their wills to include her as sole beneficiary, kills them. Look, the whole M.O., a complex series of seductions and murders, that's not something you see a woman do. Oh, really? Which part you figure a woman isn't up to, the seduction or the murder? Look, I just want the field assignment. Please. Investigating her further, Alex ends up in Hawaii, can't be bad, and ends up befriending and getting very close to Catherine, who is now aware that someone is investigating her. Guys, I'm Stephen at Real Classic Film Reviews. Subscribe to the channel if you're a fan of classic movies. Uh, here on the channel, I talk about films from every era and genre, some stone core classics and some a little more obscure. Uh, but either way, the aim is to inform, excite, infuse as many people as possible about the awesomeness that is classic cinema. So Black Widow is more of a modern film noir than the erotic thriller it probably thinks it is. Five years later, Basic Instinct would arrive and that would not only ramp up the naughtiness, but would deliver a better storyline, to be honest. Uh, Black Widow in comparison now seems quite weak and tame in comparison. Now, I'll openly admit that the first half hour or so of this film had me semi-confused. Uh, the editing in it feels like it jumps from scene to scene, um, something that rears its head again later in the film. Uh, but starting with Alex almost magically figuring out who the Black Widow's next victim is going to be uh, and then hopping around locations and witnesses and I don't know if it was just me but it took me a bit of an effort to keep up. Anyway, once we do get to Hawaii and Alex and her suspect somehow become best friends after Alex sacks off her useless private eye, who will come back into the story later, a strange love triangle begins that I can't discuss in too much detail to avoid certain spoilers. But this Hawaiian half of the film does let us see how good Russell and Winger are at portraying women who are both obsessed with their work. Uh, Russell admits that her gold digging schemes are actually a job, uh, while Winger's work kind of compensates for her empty life. Uh, to get to Hawaii, she actually sells off all of her worldly possessions. Heard you sold all your stuff. Yeah. What'd you get for the BMW? Uh, I got 5,900 for it. Blue Book's is 66, but... Salesman was wearing a bow tie and I was in a hurry. And there's a few more of those strange pacing slash editing issues later in the film, almost in a rush to get it to its final act. There's about 15 minutes or so where Russell's villain gets married, uh, plots and possibly carries out a murder, leaves town, comes back to town. Um, it seems like some harsh editing had to be done to uh, make all this happen. I'm glad you came over, Paul. I need to talk to you. Don't you think Rennie left the island a bit abruptly? No, just her usual trip. So the 1980s did see a bit of a film noir revival with a, a good run of pretty solid crime films. Um, as well as the ones I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we also had films like Blood Simple, um, Frantic, The Postman Always Rings Twice, which shares its director, Bob Raffleson, with this film. Now there is an interesting sexual undercurrent between the ladies in Black Widow, which is hinted at a couple of times throughout the film. I think if it was followed through on it, probably would have added a, a nice extra dimension to proceedings. I would have liked to have seen a relationship between the two develop a little bit more, just to confuse things. Uh, they bond by sharing things anyway, like clothes and uh, men, uh, but they also don't trust one another. They seem like they're constantly watching each other out of the corner of their eyes. So as far as these kind of thrillers go, this one is pretty straightforward. Even the big shocker twist ending feels a little bit like it's wandered out of a daytime TV murder she wrote episode. 
but there's still pleasure to be had watching Teresa Russell effortlessly burn through money and men as Catherine Peterson. Uh, she's super meticulous in researching her potential victims. Uh, she has the ability to change everything about herself in order to capture her next man. And depending on which husband she has at the time, she can be a cold, sophisticated businesswoman, um, a bimbo with a strong text and accent, and even a well-educated museum curator. And whichever guy she takes, you see that she doesn't really have much trouble charming away into these men's lives. It is a bit of a shame that nothing huge really came of Teresa Russell. Uh, she kind of drifted off the map when she could have been giving Sharon Stone a run for her money. And Deborah Winger makes a great lead also. She's as dedicated at her job as Russell is in The Art of Seduction, uh, but quickly begins to spiral into her world. All I know is that she's obsessed with killing and you're obsessed with her. What worries me is that you might be as wacky as she is. Winger was in massive demand at the time after the double success of an officer and a gentleman in terms of endearment. But again, it's a shame she didn't hit these heights again. So the cast in Black Widow also includes uh, Dennis Hopper and Nicole Williamson in doomed cameo roles as rich husbands. And I love James Hong in his minor role as a sleazy and sharp-tongued private eye. You look for a lady for four weeks, huh? One time I looked for somebody for 18 years. Mm. Quite a recommendation. Mm. So Black Widow is an interesting thriller that sits between the noirs of old and the anything goes era of taboo cinema that films like Fatal Attraction and Basic Instinct would lay the foundation for. If you've seen it though, let me know what you think of that ending. And if you haven't, go check it out.